Hi, Darnell. Thanks for helping with my project. Uh, could you say a little bit about yourself? Sure. Darnell Milton. I, uh, I'm, I'm a project manager for H HPI and I've uh, been uh, in technology for probably the better part of 35 years or so. And um, I'm, uh, I'm married with four kids and um, uh, I have had the experience of living overseas. My dad was in the military, so we lived in Istanbul in Athens, Greece. So I've had the uh, experience of that. And so I've experienced other cultures and being a minority in those cultures has been real. Even though I was small, um, I do remember Turkey. I don't remember Greece so much because I was real small, but yeah. And we've kind of lived around the States, uh, born in New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, lived in like New Jersey for a minute, <laughs> um, the rid of Louisiana and some of the small towns. Did most of my growing up in Houston though, I'm from 73 to um, 1980, which is a formidable years in school. I, I went to school there, here. Um, <clears throat> But New Orleans is my home, you know, and um, so uh, I have seven brothers and uh, one one sister. One of my brothers passed away last year. Uh, he was he was sick, so he had a bunch of things wrong with him, so he passed away. So that was tough. But um, other than that, that's it. I, I enjoy jazz music. Uh, sports, all sports. I'm a, a big, especially the major ones, uh, football, basketball, and baseball, especially football and basketball. And so, um, and I kind of like to cook sometimes. You know, <laughs> uh, my wife does most of it, but uh, every now and then I'll get in there and do something. Yeah, that's it. Um, can you... I mean, about how old were you when you were in Istanbul? I was, I want to say six and seven, somewhere around there. Uh, I was, yeah, it was, I can't remember the year, two years we lived there. And my, like I said, my dad was uh, stationed there. And at the time, there were a lot of Germans that lived in Turkey and in Istanbul. And it's, obviously, if you heard of Istanbul is the carpet capital of the world and and it's a beautiful country because you see a bunch of mountains and castles and stuff like that so it was it was real 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 cool we had friends uh, uh being an American there uh uh was good and bad they always thought we had money you know, because um, we live with around gypsies, what they call gypsies back in the day. I don't know what they call them now, but um, so they see them American, they want to hug you. And, and of course, you know, you're running from it. So, uh, but that experience was good because uh, it's a Muslim country at the time it was anyway. And um, we just, you know, at a young age like that, you you get interested in other cultures. I've always been interested in other cultures. In fact, Jogging could tell you, I used to sit there and ask him questions about things. He would tell me how Indians do this and that, and, you know, and I would tell him how Americans do it. <laughs> and so that was, that's always been inter interesting to me. So, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's it's amazing all these little um, daily interactions. You know, just anything from like buying a car or a house, how that varies from culture to culture. Or, you know, you you want to like do a business arrangement. You know, the expectation about all these things before you actually talk about business uh, versus yes. you know, do you just jump into it? It's it's it. Uh -huh. It is really fascinating how different cultures yeah. behave. Yeah, yeah. Like I give you an example, and, and 
uh, you know, we were talking about arranged marriages, right? We, I was talking to, and <clears throat> I, I was, I was, I was telling them that, you know, well, in America, we marry who we like or who we enjoy or who we fall in love with. And hopefully the parents are coming around. If not, you know, that's their problem. Sometimes, most of the time. And, uh, and I said, however, I'm not saying our way is the right way because 50% of marriage is here and in divorce. So, um, but what he told me was, yeah, but they, they have arranged marriages and it's not based off emotion. It's just more like a business, you know? And he said, unfortunately, a lot of times there's no love lost there. There's no, you know, it's just like two roommates, <laughs> you know? But they go along with it and they'll go, he said, oh, they'll go along with it for the entire life. And I thought that was interesting, you know? Uh, no right or wrong, just kind of laying it out there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I often thought about this too. My wife is Indian. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 uh, I, I used to see her walking and I knew it was, I seen you with her. And so I just put two together. Uh, she's pretty, she, she's, she's a VP or something, right? Uh, she, I, she's a director. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh, pretty up there. I thought, yeah, I thought so. I said, yeah. Uh, she she's definitely wearing the pants in the family now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that's well, it gives you a chance to do what you're doing. Man, it's amazing to me. How, how did you get the 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 I'm I know we're getting off the the cojones that the the change careers at this point. I mean, what I mean, what was the um because, I mean, we all would like to do it, but I'm scared. I'm scared to do it. I mean, what am I going to do? I don't know what else to, I could do. And I would be worried about shifting gears at this point in my life. Yeah, actually, uh, last September, um, you know, we have like these weekly stand-ups with our, our team. And um, one of our team members was in the meeting like normal. And the next week he was dead. And, um, you know, for me, that just uh, kind of hit home that, um, you know, life is short. You don't know how short yeah. or long it is. And, you know, I kind of looked at my situation, uh, older son's out of college, younger son is in college. We don't have any, like, I don't have any at home uh, parental responsibilities. You know, of course, yeah. I'm still... Uh, you know, have wife responsibilities and yeah. in-law responsibilities and, and things like that. But, um, and it's just like, you know, um, it, you know, if you don't do it now, you'll never do it. Right. Uh, and it just felt like to me that it would be better to do it. And it feels like a really safe thing. Like um, mm -hmm. the company that I, I was with, um, you know, they they had put together like had this this book of you know this going the way uh, card uh, you know and and it's like ninety people and uh, seventeen pages of well wishing uh, and you know they're like you know if anything happens you could come back here and stuff like that so I mean it feels like a riskless move okay. Um, okay. But I, I guess it needs to be more like Car Cortez coming to the new world. You know, we should burn the ships. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta make it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta put that thought out of the mind. But um, you know, that's really it. It's just um, uh, you know, the window opened and the realization that if you didn't jump through it, you may never have that chance again. Um, mm. and you know, I mean, for me, I, I mean, you and I both grew up in like the 1990s with like the internet. I mean, if, mm -hmm. if you remember at the beginning of 1990s, you go and ask people about email, web shopping, uh, you know, web searches, they would have no clue what you were talking about, mm -mm. <laughs> you know? And then by like 2000, uh, you know, ordering stuff online was like, 
commonplace. Uh, you right, know, the, right. the web, everybody had email addresses. Every business had a, oh, yeah. a website. And I feel like with the investment that we see in the space sector, that um, the 2020s are really going to be to space what the 1990s were to the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I also feel like maybe it's a riskless change from uh, that standpoint too. Like this is sort of like catching this other wave that just was like the internet wave. Um, so I, I'm kind of really excited about that. I think 2030 comes around, uh, you'll be able to travel in, in space. Uh, it, it'd be a lot more common than, than you might, might even imagine at this, this point. Yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting, yeah. It's, I got a few people I would like to go to space on a one-way ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Seinfeld did this episode uh, about how, uh, you know, how space shuttle launches have gotten boring, uh, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know what they should do? It's send somebody that doesn't want to go. And they have to like pull him and put him in the thing and he's just like holding on. <laughs> that <laughs> would give people interest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You watch Seinfeld? I did. And you know what? I went to New York this past weekend and I ate at the original soup kitchen. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. You know, the, the soup Nazi. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I watch. I, I, I record and watch. I watch the same ones. It drives my wife crazy because I watch the same ones over and over again. I, I can rehearse every episode of Seinfeld. I watch them every day. So, yeah. But I, sure. I, I felt really kind of old when I went next door because at the, the soup kitchen, there's no place to sit down. You just get the soup. So we went mm -hmm. to a cafe next door to go eat there. And um, the waitress is like, hey, uh, so you got the soup over there at the soup kitchen? And they're like, yes. And she's like, you know, that was like featured on this show called the Seinfeld. You know, like, I mean, there was a time in like the 90s and early 2000s where it was just expected you knew Seinfeld. We were yeah. literally in the post Seinfeld age. Yeah, where, yeah where exactly. People may not yeah. know Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, in the nineties too. I every now and then I would still get carded. You know, like if you go in a club, they ask for your ID. They don't ask for IDs anymore. <laughs> they ask me, "Am I looking for someone?" <laughs> so, so I guess my age is showing. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's something <laughs> else. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's tough getting old. You know, I don't think anybody yeah. thinks. I think it's like um, like COVID uh, type of thing. Uh, you know, we, we think, uh, you know, it's something that everybody else gets. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. 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 I was reading this article uh, about this lady who went into a coma and woke up 30 years later. And uh, she was just like really shocked to see the changes that happened to her and, and her husband. I mean, uh, she was afraid to use a cordless phone because, you know, whenever she had went into a coma, there's no such thing. And the whole wireless technology was just beyond comprehension. <laughs> wow. I, I seen something similar. A friend of a friend, of a friend served time in prison. <laughs> so when he came out, everything's changed. He's like, Dude, what's going on with everybody's got a phone and you know, and when he went in, that wasn't the case. And uh, and just the way people dress and just carry themselves, as he said, it's just totally different. He said, I feel like walking in space, you know, I'm way out of my comfort zone. So yeah. Well, let's go ahead and you got some more questions? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so did you know that NASA is planning to send astronauts to the moon again for the first time since 1972? Wow. Uh, when they did it in 72, how, how was it? I mean, they just, you know, people just applied for it or, or was it just when, 
was it just astronauts that went? In, in yeah, it was it was just astronauts that went. In okay. fact, um, uh, most of them, if not all of them, I think were, um, uh, you know, military test pilots uh, who had gone, and the you, you know there were. It started out with Apollo 11 landing on the moon, 12 landed mm -hmm. on the moon, 13 was supposed to, but had an accident. Um, and then 14, 15, 16, 17. So we had six landings on the moon between 1969, 1972, 12 people walked on the moon. Um, mm -hmm. And then in 1972, uh, decided, you know, we beat the Russians, mission accomplished, costing too much. Uh, and then, you know, kind of really down, uh, downsized uh, everything, ended up building the space shuttle. So. Mm. Okay. So what year was that when the Challenger exploded? It, yeah, today, um, you know, at NASA, uh, in my training class, we covered space accidents. So today's been a kind of a downer from a, mm -hmm. a NASA day since half of it was spent yeah. on the Apollo one fire where three people died in a test, uh, the 1986 Challenger uh, disaster, and then the 2003 Columbia uh, disaster. Mm. So, but yeah, that mm -hmm. was 1986. And um, that December, 1985, December, 1985, I got to go to uh, the Johnson Space Center, no, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida for the first time. And right. Challenger was actually on the launch pad. Uh, it had taken off in January and the coldest day that any uh, space shuttle had ever taken off. And, um, you know, the, the rubber seals that were in those solid booster, uh, booster engines um, have to expand, but because it's so cold, they didn't. And then hot gases came out of the side of them and ignited the big tank. Yeah, man, that was that was just. I remember being in front of the TV, watching it. Uh, I can't remember if, if I was at home or what, because it was. I remember people around me, so. And it was almost unbelievable. It all happened so fast. You just looked at it and oh, sh did that just happen? Wow. And that was devastating. That was that was not good. Well, yeah. I mean, on top of that, uh, it was a, uh, you know, they had this teacher in space um, program. So mm -hmm. several thousands of teachers had applied to be the first teacher put in space. Krista mm -hmm. McAuliffe from um, Concord, New Hampshire, had ultimately ended up winning that contest and was on that flight. And mm -hmm. so there were a lot of teachers that had showed it to their students because I mean, teacher in space and, uh, you know, so a lot of, uh, a disproportionate number of kids <laughs> got to see that particular flight because of that. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that was tough, man. Yeah. So sadly, 72 was uh, sadly the 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 teacher being on that flight is one of the reasons why there's so much pressure to make it go, even though there was some worry about the cold, was because mm -hmm. the State of the Union address was coming up. I think it's later that day or a couple of days later. Yeah. And um, you know, uh President Reagan really wanted to be able to say that they launched the teacher to space. So um, the, the flight had already been postponed three times before that. And mm -hmm. there was just a lot of pressure to, to make it, make it yeah, happen. That was, that was, yeah, that was a eyesore at the time, but yeah. Anyway, what, what else you got? Um, so we're going back to the moon. Uh, what do you think about it? Well, I think I think it's good. I think I mean um, I know there was a low with Space Center uh, even here and stuff. I've been out there to the Space Center with my kids, and I've been there several times. Um, and I uh, I know that things kind of went on a low for a while there, but um, I think a lot of energy should be put 
yeah. on that side of things, you know. I mean, if you if you're gonna blow money, blow it in blow it in space. I always say, but um, I just think it's important uh, uh, that we continue to grow that way and and learn about space and all the there's a lot we don't know about what's out there in space. I mean. Uh, uh, and so I, I think it's important that we continue to do what we're doing. And, yeah. Grow as a nation, as you say. Keep yeah. keep pushing out. Yeah. Um, so if it was safe and affordable, would you take a trip to space? I think I would. Yeah. I think I would. How, how far would you go? Just to orbit, to the moon? Would you immigrate to Mars? Uh, you know, Elon Musk <laughs> wants to build a million person city on Mars by 2050. Um, they have affordable housing. <laughs> uh, they say, uh, you know, a middle class family should be able to liquidate their assets here on Earth and, and make it there. That's kind of like the price range that they're, they're looking at. I, I would definitely consider it. Uh, I wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be far-fetched for me i mean i'd be something i would say you know i've lived here i've lived here for over 50 some years <laughs> i know what i'm getting here maybe the hamburgers taste better up there i don't know <laughs> wow i i didn't realize you were 57 i always thought you were in your 40s what's that i said i didn't realize you were 57 i thought you were in your 40s no, no, I'm 50, actually 58. Wow. I, I just, just turned 58 uh, January 8th, yeah. How old are you, Nate? Uh, 46. 40, 46, okay. Yeah, you guys are young, man. <laughs> <laughs> I keep uh, yeah. telling everybody life begins at 50. <laughs> yeah. Everything until then is just practice. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I when I turned 30, everything was cool. When I turned 40, things were cool. When I turned 50, I was like, that sounds old. You know, that 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 has a 40 still, you you're good in your 40s, you you know. But when you when you turn 50, it's like, okay, okay, I gotta get serious about life now. <laughs> Where am I with my career? Where am I with this? You know. Um, but in those eight years, I'm 58 now. I'm telling you, eight years went like that. I don't even remember. Eight years, they're zoomed by like that. So, yeah. Yep. Well, uh, Darnell, that's pretty much all the questions I had. Okay. So okay. I'll go ahead and stop the recording. <laughs>